In this video, I'm going to explain to you the reasons why I don't believe Kim Potter should be convicted of manslaughter. My name is Nathan Laurie. If you are new here, we talk about the law and the facts. If you are about that life, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel. So for those of you who don't know who Kim Potter is or who understands what's going on with this trial, Kim Potter is the officer who mistakenly pulled a gun instead of her taser and shot 20-year-old Dante Wright doing an arrest in Minnesota. So here are the facts. Officers pulled over a car with two individuals. Now, the reasons why they pulled over the car was first, they noticed that there was an air freshener hanging from the rearview mirror. They saw the car was in a left turn only lane, but had a right turn signal on. Um, then they looked at the tags of the vehicle and saw that the car had expired tags. They pulled over the car and found that the driver, Dante Wright, had no license, no insurance, an order of protection against him, and a warrant for an illegal weapons charge. Now, because of the warrant, officers decided to arrest Dante Wright, and during officers attempt to place him in custody Dante resisted arrest jumped back into the car and tried to drive off with some officers partially still in the vehicle Now, Kim Potter attempted to tase Dante Wright, but mistakenly grabbed her gun instead of her taser. Kim Potter then fired one shot, killing Dante Wright. Now, let's talk about Officer Kim Potter. She's a 26-year veteran of the force. She has essentially a perfect record as an officer. She has no complaints. She's complied with all training requirements. She is well loved by her colleagues. She was a union representative, president of the union. And in her 26 years on the force, she had never actually used her gun. She had used her taser a couple of times, pulling it out, but had never deployed it within those 26 years. So this was the first time that she actually tried to employ a taser while in the line of duty. Now, it's also worth noting that none of these facts are disputed. Now, the state is alleging that Officer Potter committed a crime. That crime is manslaughter. And they're arguing that Officer Potter created an unjustified risk of death and ignored that risk. Dante Wright died because of her actions. Now, this is known as criminal negligence or culpable negligence. And this is different than regular negligence because regular negligence is someone makes a mistake. And we don't criminalize mistakes, but you pay for making a mistake. Versus culpable negligence is where these things could have been avoided and you made a choice to do something that led to someone's death. Essentially, in plain words, the state is trying to prove that Kemp Potter acted so carelessly that she should be held criminally liable for her actions. So for you to really understand what's going on in this case, I have to explain to you the difference between negligence and culpable negligence. Now, when thinking about this, it really comes down to three elements. The first element is, was there a creation of an unjustified risk? The second element is, was the defendant aware of this risk? Was the defendant conscious of the risk? Did they know of the risk that they were creating? And last but not least, the state also has to show that the defendant disregarded the risk they were conscious of. Now, if you could check all three of those boxes, you have criminal negligence. And if the state loses on one of these elements, you have regular negligence. Let's go through this with an example. Let's say someone is driving down the road and they're coming up to an intersection and have a red light in front of them. They're supposed to stop. We all know they're supposed to stop. But the person is in a rush. They don't see any of the cars in the intersection and they go through the red light. Now, when they go through the red light, they cause a catastrophic injury and two people are killed. So let's go through the elements. Was there a creation of an unjustified risk by this driver? 
And you would say, yes, the creation of that risk is going through the red light, right? They created an unjustified risk. There was no reason why they needed to go through this red light. Let's say, for instance, if they were driving an ambulance or someone had a medical emergency that needed to get to the hospital immediately and they ran through the red light, then you have a justified risk, right? You're trying to save someone else's life and you cause this accident. But in our example, the person was just running late for work and ran a red light. So we do have the creation of an unjustified risk. Second, was the defendant, in our case, conscious of that risk? Did they know that they were creating a risk? Well, in this case, yes, the person was conscious of the risk that they were creating. They were going to drive through the red light. And last, did the person disregard the risk? And obviously the person did. They drove through the red light, disregarding the risk, and caused this accident where people died. So this is criminal negligence. You've checked off each one of the boxes. But now, let's change the hypothetical a little bit. Let's say we still have our car driving down the street, going to an intersection with a hard red light. And in this case, the person intends to stop. The person wants to stop at the red light, but accidentally hits the gas pedal instead of the brake. This is known as pedal confusion. So the person hits the gas instead of the brake, shoots into the intersection, and you have a catastrophic injury. Two people are killed. Well, let's now evaluate our elements again. Did the person create an unjustified risk? Well, yeah, the person did, like before, ran through the red light. Going through the red light is an unjustified risk. And the person wasn't justified in creating that risk, right? Well, let's look at the second element. Was the person conscious of this risk that they were creating? Did they know that they were creating this risk? And here, they thought they were hitting the brake, but mistakenly hit the gas. The defendant wasn't conscious they had created this unjustified risk. Right, because they were trying to apply the brake and they accidentally hit the gas. So the second element we really don't have. The person just didn't know that they created any risk. And then last, whether the person disregarded the risk or not. Well, since the person didn't know that they even created the risk, then they obviously couldn't have disregarded a risk, right? They can't disregard a risk that they don't know that they created. So here they've lost on element two and the state has lost on element three, meaning that this would just be simple negligence. Pedal confusion, the person hit the gas instead of the brake. Now think about the differences in each one of these incidents. In the first incident where the person consciously went through the red light and had the accident, that person was going to be charged criminally, right? That person is being charged criminally and can go to jail. When the second one, the person may not go to jail, right, because you don't have those elements, but they're still going to, you know, have to pay. They're still going to be found to be negligent in causing those deaths, and they're still going to have a lot of civil liability that they're going to have to overcome, wrongful death lawsuits and so forth. So it's not like this person is free and off the hook, right? This person is going to have to pay for the negligence that they cause, but they won't be criminally liable for that negligence because it was a mistake. So now keep that in mind as we talk about the Dante Wright case. So now after a couple of weeks of testimony, the issue is, was Kim Potter just negligent or was she criminally negligent? So let's go with the arguments of both the state and the defense. Well, let's start with the state since they have the burden of proof. The state says that, well, first, was there an unjustified risk? Yeah, you pulled a loaded gun and pointed at someone. That's your unjustified risk. Just like in both cases, going through the red light was your unjustified risk. Here, pulling a loaded gun and pointing at someone is an unjustified risk. Now, second, the state is saying, well, was Kim Porter conscious of the risk she just created? And they make a layered argument. First, they say, well, tasers are yellow, guns are black, right? So the color of both tools are different. They'll say the weight of the taser versus the gun is also different. They'll also say that Kim Potter carried the taser and guns on opposite sides of her body. She had 26 years of training and all this experience being trained on tasers every year she was trained on these tasers. The state is saying, well, yeah, for all these reasons, she was conscious of the risk and should be held criminally liable, even if it was a mistake. Now, the defense has attacked each one of these elements differently. 
The first element is whether Kim Potter created an unjustifiable risk. The defense is saying, well, no, the risk was justified, even if she did pull a gun. One, they were effectuating a lawful arrest. Dante Wright had a warrant. They were trying to arrest him. He had initiated violent resistance of the arrest, right? He was trying to pull off with officers hanging in the car. Could have injured these officers. And the defense has said officers' lives were in jeopardy, and Dante could have dragged and killed a couple of officers. So the first element, they said, well, there wasn't an unjustified risk. The risk of pulling a taser or a gun was justified, attacking that first element. The second element the defense tried to attack was the conscious disregard. And the defense's argument is simple. This is pedal confusion. If she didn't know that she pulled the gun, like everyone has said, you know, it was a mistake. She didn't know she pulled the gun. Just like the driver didn't know they hit the gas, they believed they hit the brake. Then she wasn't conscious of any type of risk. And her not being conscious of the risk makes this simple negligence and not criminal ne negligence, and you lose the second element. And then to attack the last element, the defense says when she pulled the trigger, she believed she was pulling the trigger on a taser and not a gun. So she didn't disregard any risk of pulling the trigger on a gun because she thought she had a taser. So at the end of the day, what do I believe about this? Well, I believe it simply comes down to this. Did Kim Potter make a mistake or did she not make a mistake? Now think about our earlier example with pedal confusion. The prosecutor can make the same exact argument for charging that person. Did the person create an unjustifiable risk? Yeah, they ran through the stoplight. But now if we take this prosecutor's argument and apply it to the pedal confusion case, the person has a license for 30 years, the person is a driving instructor, that person is taking classes on good driving. That person's never had an accident, pays all their tickets, does everything, everything by the book. And now the prosecutor would argue that that 30 years of experience, that doing everything correctly, that doing everything by the book, they should have known, right? They've been driving for 30 years. They should have known that they were pressing the gas instead of the brake. And even though it was a mistake, they should be held criminally liable. We can all admit they mistakenly hit the gas pedal instead of the brake but they should now be held criminally liable and spend probably the rest of their lives in prison. Now, I understand a lot of people are going to say, well, hey, someone died, people, you know, she should pay for a mistake, and we do. People do pay for mistakes when people are killed by accidents, right? That's the reason why we have civil courts. But not every time someone dies by the hands of someone else, it is criminal. And in this case, I think this is negligent. I think Dante Wright's parents are going to get paid. I think his family should get paid. I think this person maybe shouldn't be a cop anymore. But to hold her criminally liable, it just doesn't make sense. So let me know how you feel in this video. Let me know in the comment section. Let me know if you think I'm right. The jury may come back and say she's guilty. Do you guys feel that they can criminalize accidents? Because we're going down a real tough road here if this is allowed to go on. Peace.